Well, today we're out here, we're stripping canola with the combine here, with the stripper header. Um, first off, I'm gonna go through the combine setting stuff. Basically, we have the shell bore now turned all the way down about as slow as it'll go. I think we're like at 380 or 400 RPMs, and this canola now is dry enough that it seems to be doing a pretty good job of, real good job actually stripping the seeds off and not having a lot of header loss. So it's nice to see that part's gonna work, I think, with the stripper header. I'm not a big canola fan or straight brassica fan like a mustard crop really because these crops for some reason um, in our system don't do very well they like bacterially dominated soils and as we hopefully transition to more fungal which is what we're trying to do i don't think they're going to do quite as well in the first place um, the other bad thing with canola is to really crank a good canola crop out oftentimes people are doing at least multiple one or two passes of insecticide which is completely counterproductive in our system so um, we avoided doing that by trying to raise the bricks level of this plant with some um, boron and some other natural stuff that we applied here on the plant. Um, I think we did good with that. We had some flea beetle stuff to start out with. The biggest problem with this crop this year is the emergence wasn't very good um, from the get-go. And then the spring was cold and then when it got hot, it got really quite hot and this stuff came up uneven. And so right now we're out here cutting like five bushel canola. A uh, great way to finish up harvest, right? But anyways, we're down to maybe 100 acres or so of this left. And uh, I'll take you through the settings that our case automation came up with in the combine to finally get this set right for the stripper header. Because when you're only running five bushels of stuff through the combine with the stripper header, um, there's not a lot coming into it, right? So it, it's a way different adjustment than if we were bringing all this straw in there too. Um, I'm gonna show you guys just real quick the stubble that it leaves. You can't hardly tell where we cut versus where we didn't. So if you look here, looking down this row, on the left side over here, we have not cut or stripped this at all. And on the right side, it is stripped. The good thing about that is it leaves quite a lot of cover here um, for snow catch at least. So that's one positive for sure. And then looking at the pods, you can see there's still some pods left in the plant, but the stripper header actually is doing a remarkably good job of stripping the seeds out of there, sucking those up into the header without actually um, taking mo most, most of the rest of this plant. So you can see our ground cover here. That part's another positive here. This is a wheat on wheat, then with canola following it. So two high carbon crops and then a broadleaf. The good news of that um, rotation, obviously, is that we still have a lot of ground cover for weed suppression and for holding moisture. Uh, you can see Wendy coming here with the stripper header. And this thing's rolling along at a pretty good clip. Sometimes canola is a pain to cut with the draper because it likes to ball up in the center of the header. But for this thing, we're able to just kind of cruise right along. So here's our combine settings. As you can see on the screen at the top left, you're looking at the rotor speed. We're about 430 RPMs there. Uh, the concave opening only at one. Of course, you have a close pretty much all the way up for the stripper header. The pre sieves at three. That lets most of the canola in there, nothing else, set that low. And then the top sieve and bottom sieve at the moment are at 10 and 6. That automation stuff, it adjusts that all the time to try and clean this sample up. And then our fan down there is running um, in the 620 RPM range, I think. So basically, this thing started out really dirty. It took it about 15 minutes. Then Wendy had to kind of limit some stuff on how far it could open and close stuff like the sieves, but it sorted that out into what you're going to see here pretty quick like was a really clean canola sample without a whole lot of loss. So looking here at the sample in the truck here, you want this to be kind of dirty. If not, you're probably throwing some out. So to kind of summarize this canola situation, uh, we try mustard and canola on this farm quite a few times. We've tried in intensive input stuff where we put a fair amount of fertilizer on it sprayed it for bugs on the mustard in and it's still really in a drought just doesn't turn out so on wheat or barley usually we can count on about five bushels per acre per inch of rain and that seems to work out about like that about like clockwork on these brassica crops like the mustard or the canola they need a fair amount of rain just to get their stuff established and then they need a rain at the end to kind of make some yield and normally on our farm here where we're only averaging now six to seven inches a year of rain they just don't quite have enough to finish out and the other thing is in nature you see a lot of grass in native rangeland right but you see almost no brassicas out there and i think monocrop brassicas really aren't going to fit our system they would fit well i think with peas um, or with flax maybe we'll do some intercropping can't do a lot of that yet because it's not insurable, which is a pretty high risk situation. But I think we're about done doing monocrop, brassica crops. And uh, 
it's just stuff that we're learning as we go along here at least we have some good ground cover that was left this stuff is worth like 18 bucks a bushel this year so it's not a total waste of time to be out here cutting it but um, going forward we're trying to figure out a way to integrate maybe these in a little bit into our intercrop type situation but as far as a monocrop uh, and Wendy and I talked about it and I think we're pretty well done with monocrop brassica crops.